In our politics lead, today President Biden signed an executive order aimed at protecting reproductive rights after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. But the order is vague and it leaves most of the details up to the Health and Human Services Secretary, who has said there's no, quote, magic bullet to restore the right. The White House says today's move will expand access to emergency contraception and devices like IUDs, launch new public education efforts on patient rights, provide more legal representation for those who are legally seeking abortions and the doctors who are providing them, and focus on protecting patient privacy when people are looking online for information about abortions. But the order stops far short of meeting the demands of abortion rights activists, and Biden is placing much of the responsibility to act on Congress. Legal challenges over abortion are still unfolding across the country, and CNN's Jeff Zeleny met with people on both sides of the issue in Virginia, a closely divided swing state that will is still pretty much trying to figure out what comes next. So help me God. As Glenn Youngkin took office this year as the country's newest Republican governor, his Virginia victory was hailed by the GOP as a roadmap for the party's success. First, I am pro-life. He opposed abortion rights, but rarely emphasized it, focusing instead on economic and education issues. When the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, most Republican governors across the country moved swiftly to ban or severely restrict abortions. But in Virginia, Youngkin is taking a slower, more measured approach. I'm a pro-life governor, and I will sign a bill that comes to my desk that protects life. And I look forward to that. The governor supports a law seeking to ban abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy, with exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother, as he tries to balance the demands from strict opponents of abortion rights with the political reality of Democrats controlling the state Senate by one vote. All eyes will be on Virginia. Um, I think we're the epicenter for the initial decisions that will be made on a lot of the pro-life legislation. Senator Amanda Chase, who challenged Youngkin in the Republican primary last year, said she would prefer a bill that goes even further. But she knows that is unlikely to find success. So she supports the governor's plan. So even the 15-week bill, you think, it has an uphill? I think it has an uphill battle, honestly, in, in, in the Virginia Senate because of the makeup. Of the, of the Virginia Senate, 19 to 21, 19 Republicans, 21 Democrats. As legal challenges unfold in states across the nation, the political debate in Virginia is taking shape with the nuance of a closely divided battleground. Well, certainly it's taken us decades to get where we are in this moment, to get past the decision of Roe. And so to think that tomorrow we could ban all abortion would be unrealistic. But I understand the sentiment. Victoria Cobb is president of the Family Foundation of Virginia, an influential lobbying group that opposes abortion. She's calling for a patient pragmatism. When you're talking about human lives, you do what you can when you can, rather than um, put out what you believe and what you want to have happen, you put out what you can actually accomplish. Youngkin insists common ground can be found. I believe that this is a moment where the Commonwealth of Virginia can come together. That's not how Democratic Senate leader Louise Lucas sees it. The bill is dead on arrival. Any abortion bill must pass through the Education and Health Committee, of which she is the chair, and decides what is or is not considered by the full Senate. I will not agree to anything less than what, what is codified in code in Virginia right now, and that is for 20 weeks. And so if the governor is trying to push a 15-week ban, it's not going to get through my committee. I can guarantee you that one. You can block this in your committee. You have the power as the chair. I do. Senator Lucas tells me she will do everything in her power to make sure Virginia remains, in her words, a safe haven for women seeking access to abortion. Now, Governor Youngkin and Republicans are pushing for a ban after 15 weeks as a starting point with calls by some to go much further. It is clear that Virginia will be a closely watched test case for all of the fallout from that Supreme Court ruling as the country is divided into a state-by-state -state patchwork of abortion laws. Caitlin. CNN's Jeff Zeleny, thank you.